Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Heterodoxa, the channel that aims to explore heterodoxical topics in the fields of linguistics, literature, and culture. In this video, we are going to talk about Persian semiotics, or the theory of sign by Charles Sanders Peirce. Charles Sanders Peirce was early recognized as one of the great figures in the history of semiotics and as the founder of the modern theory of signs. A universal genius in many sciences, Peirce, who was largely ignored by his contemporaries, is now unanimously acclaimed as America's greatest philosopher. Peirce defines a sign as something which stands to somebody for something else. As shown in the figure, for Peirce, a sign is made up of three parts, the representament, the interpretant, and the object. In simple terms, the representament refers to the form which the sign takes. Not necessarily material, though usually interpreted as such, it is also called by some theories as the sign vehicle. An interpretant does not refer to an interpreter, but rather to the sense made of the sign. And finally, an object, which refers to something beyond the sign to which it refers. It is also called by others as a referent. In other words, the representament literally refers to something that does the representing. In Peirce's term, it refers to the strategy of representation itself. It could be the use of sounds, hand movements, or others for some representational purpose. The interpretant is Peirce's term for the meaning that one gets from a sign. The interpretant, therefore, is itself a sign created in the mind of a person. And finally, the object, which is just a synonym for signified or referent. Peirce conceptualized three aspects or elements of the sign. The first one, the sign itself. The second one, the sign in relation to its objects. And the third one, the sign in relation to its interpretant. However, in this video, we are only going to focus on the relationship between the sign and the object. The relationship between the sign and the object results in three modes. The first one, the iconic sign. The second one, the symbolic sign. And the third one, the indexical sign. An icon is a sign that signifies by resemblance. In other words, when the sign shares a resemblance with its real or fictional object, it is called an icon. Some semioticians define the icon as a type of sign that imitates the object, in the sense that it looks, sounds, feels, tastes, and smells like the object itself. Common examples of icons are portraits, scale models, onomatopoeic words, realistic sounds, and imitative gestures. Let us now proceed to symbols. A symbol is a sign that is determined by its object only in the sense that it is interpreted as being such, and is thus totally independent of similarity or physical connection to its object. In other words, a symbol is the mode in which the sign does not resemble the signified, but which is fundamentally arbitrary or purely conventional, so that this relationship between the sign and the object must be agreed upon and learned. Common examples of symbols are language in general, numbers, Morse code, traffic lights, and national flags. And finally, we come to the index. The index is a sign that relates to its object, 
not as a copy but in some real way as a pointer or a marker. In other words, index is the mode in which the sign is not arbitrary but is directly connected in some way, physically or causally, to the object, regardless of the intention, and this link can be observed or inferred. Common examples of indexes are natural signs such as smoke, thunder, or footprints, medical symptoms such as pain or rash, pulse rate, measuring instruments such as weathercock, thermometer, clock, signals such as a knock on a door or a phone ringing, and pointers such as a pointing finger or a directional signpost. If you find this channel informative and provocative, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be always updated with new videos. Thanks for watching.